My name is Derek Nallen, and that is spelled D-E-R-R-I-C-K-N-O-W-L-I-N, and I am the Democratic candidate for state representative in the 134th district. Okay. Um, what issue is most important to you as we head into November? Uh, I would say that uh, the response to COVID-19 in the state or lack, lack of response really is uh, uh, the main issue that's really impacting the people in my district and that includes things like uh, the unemployment crisis that is happening because of COVID-19. Uh, also uh, eviction relief, we have a lot of people who are uh, becoming homeless as a result of this crisis uh, that aren't receiving any help. But that also extends to the landlords and people that own property. They also need help, you know, paying their bills as well throughout all of this. Uh, and that is closely tied in with education as well. We're asking our, uh, our public education system to uh, abruptly and suddenly change how they do things. And while we're doing it, we're cutting their budget and taking away resources from them while they're trying to do it. So what are we doing wrong right now? And if you win, what will you do differently? Well, right now, uh, you know, we should have had a, a mask mandate months ago. Uh, you know, uh, we, we need the statewide mask mandate. Uh, Medicaid expansion passed. That's a good start for health care. That's, that's one more thing that people are needing. Uh, they need that anyway, but especially due to COVID, uh, you know, access to health care. Uh, that's something I intend to work on as well as uh, as, as trying to help people who are needing help out there. Uh, what I would do differently uh, for a long time, we've, we've sent the same people to Jefferson City and over and over again. Uh, they are not working for the people in their districts, they're, they're working for the big donors basically, and that's what I would do differently. I'd work for the people in my district and try to bring about policies that would help them for a change. What do you believe is the most is most important to the 134th district? Uh, I would say uh, from going out and talking to people, you know, the, the concerns already mentioned, uh, dealing with the COVID-19 crisis, unemployment, uh, as well as employment security. A lot of people who are employed currently, you know, they're they're not sure if their jobs are still going to be there in a month or two because of this. Uh, there's just a lot of uncertainty out there in the district and in the state. Uh, a lot of people are, are under stress. They're, they're unsure what their futures are gonna look like. Uh, and with school starting especially, I've been talking to a lot of teachers and parents both who are concerned with uh, how we're starting the school year and the, and the policies are in place to deal with that. What do you believe is top of mind for voters right now? Economy, race, or COVID-19, which is the biggest concern? Well, I think it's always economy, uh, you know, that, again, that's related closely to COVID-19. Uh, you know, there are a lot of, uh, you know, there, there's a lot going on in society and, and locally right now in, in regards to race relations. Uh, you know, I think that that is important to people, but I think uh, when it comes down to it, people, you know, they're always concerned with, you know, how am I going to take care of myself? How am I going to take care of my family? Uh, you know, people are concerned about the, the people around them that they care about, their friends. Uh, you know, I really think ultimately, you know, the people in my district, that is their main concern is just, you know, how are we going to, how are we going to make it through the COVID-19 crisis and how are we going to come out on the other side of that? How would you address uh, economy, race, and COVID-19? Economy, race, and COVID-19? Uh, well, with the economy, uh, I would say, first of all, you know, we've had a lot of budget cuts in the state due to COVID-19. Uh, you know, Crystal Quaid has said that the budget is a moral document. I love that because it's true because it shows the priorities of our legislature and our governor. And even before COVID-19, the, the, those priorities always seem to be geared towards big business and the wealthy and not just the, the normal people, the majority of the people in the state and in my district. <coughs> So I would like to, to bring about policies that help them. Uh, something that gets brought up with that a lot is well, how are you going to pay for it? I think there's a lot of uh, revenues that could be uh, collected in the state that are currently not gone after. Uh, the Wayfair tax is something we've all heard about. Uh, I think we need to, to implement that. Uh, and really, speaking big picture, just the fact that uh, the corporations and the wealthy have paid less and less in taxes over the years and people like us 
you know, normal working people, we've had to pay more and more of that share. Uh, I really would like to see those at the top pay more of their fair share. Uh, that would allow our government and the state to, to implement programs that would help people, you know, with the economy, with the things I mentioned, employment security, unemployment, eviction, uh, helping small businesses. Uh, you know, big businesses uh, are always uh, a concern, but uh, it seems to me that small businesses are falling through the cracks uh, with all with the COVID-19 crisis. And as far as race, uh, I, I I want to implement policies that uh, that bring about fairness and equality and justice, and I think that's something we don't have right now. Uh, whether it's intentional or not, it, it's, uh, you know, if, if you listen to the black community or Hispanic community or other minority communities, LGBT comes to mind, uh, you know, they, they are feeling uh, discriminate, discriminated against and left behind in this state. And uh, th those are also people that I want to work for. I want to work, work for everybody, regardless. Uh, uh, I think one big uh, issue that we could work on in regards to race is police reform. Uh, people have talked about defunding the police. Uh, I think that's a, uh, I think that's a catchphrase. People get emotional about it. Uh, really, what I'm talking about is uh, there's a lot that the police do that we're asking them to do right now that would be better done by social services, and I think we need to kind of shift. Uh, you know, how policing is done. Uh, I'm also a big believer in uh, if you're, I, I, like, I like for the police to live in the communities that they are policing. Uh, there's a concept called community policing and uh, that is something we need to get back to truly in, in a true way. How would you reassure voters that you will fight for what they want? Well, uh, that's just me, who I am as a person. Uh, you know, I, I like to tell the people in my district that I'm one of you. I never envisioned that I would run for office in my life. My background is actually in engineering and construction. <coughs> but I feel that, uh, you know, like I said, we keep, we keep voting for the same people to go to Jefferson City and to D.C. Uh, and I feel like uh, our government is supposed to be representative government. Our representatives should be people like we are. And... I have, have lived through a lot of the issues that I'm talking about in my campaign, just like the people in my district and the state have uh, faced a lot of the same struggles they have. So I understand what it feels like to feel that your government is not listening to you, not, not speaking for you, and not working for you. And uh, if you, I ran in 18, and if you looked at how I ran in that campaign and also in this campaign, I, uh, I'm consistently talking about the people in my district and what I want to do for them. Uh, I feel very passionately about the people in my district because they're not being heard, they're not being represented. And, uh, you know, I've taken on a lot of fights in the last four years since, since I have been a candidate and since I've been politically active. Uh, I'm not afraid to fight for what's right and, and for the people. And I think if, uh, if you look at my record, that, that backs that up. Why run for office? Uh, well, uh, you know, like I said, uh, the, the people in the people that we keep sending to to to, to Jefferson City and to Washington D.C. You know, and I, I've seen it for most of my lifetime. It, it's it's generally the same types of people over and over again. Uh, a lot of people that are ambitious. They they want the power. They like the access to money. Uh, I have always strongly felt that representative government, like I said, means that our, our representatives should be people that look like us, share the same experiences. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'm just someone that is that concerned that I decide to run for office myself. Uh, you know, our, our government is not, is not listening to us. The people in my district are not being heard and I want to be their voice.